This weekend, history will be made in Durban. King Mrs. Zulu Kazweletini is handing over ceremony on Saturday. It's going to be quite magnificent. Not only a massive day on the Amazulu royal calendar, it's an event that will hopefully put Durban back on the map after April's devastating floods, last year's looting, and of course over two years of crippling economic losses due to COVID-19. Let's speak now to the Premier of KwaZulu-Natal, Namusa Dube-Nube, who today officially opened an aviation academy in Peter Maritzburg. Premier, thank you so much uh, for joining us. So this is really uh, quite a, a special day. Aviation, we know, is still getting back on its feet, but today uh, the Lyft airline company started its flights to Durban, and then you opened this aviation academy. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the importance of this academy. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we're very excited about this academy because it marks really a turning point in the lives of um, our rural, you know, uh, learners, our children, our youth in KwaZulu Natal, um, where we are going to be having about um, hundreds um, young people that are going to be joining the aviation school. Um, some of them will be um, coming out as pilot engineers. Some of them will be coming with the commercial uh, pilot license, the private uh, pilot licenses as well as what is called remote um, uh, flying, uh, which is drone, in other words. And we're very excited about this program because up to now, we have one um, young person who's now joined the Lyft airline, and two of them have already joined um, this, the Fly South Air, coming from the same school. So it's really exciting for us that we are now expanding the school and getting more young people to join the aviation industry. Uh, and it's certainly really good news to hear uh, that KwaZulu-Natal is forging ahead with plans like this, bearing in mind it has been a really difficult time, particularly in KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, but we've got a very exciting weekend to look forward to, and that, of course, is when the Amazulu King receives uh, the official ceremony to, to give him his certificate, which really is a legal and constitutional confirmation of his role as the Amazulu King following his coronation in August. It's going to be a massive affair. How many people are you expecting to come to Durban this weekend? Well, as you say, it's going to be a massive event for KwaZulu Natal and for South Africa, as all the eyes are going to be glued into KwaZulu Natal, but also to South Africa. The spotlight is going to be on the president of the Republic of South Africa, where he's going to be handing over the certificate to His Majesty the King. But this will also mark, um, you know, a historic, um, a, you know, uh, event where for the first time in our lifetime, we are experiencing um, this handing over of the certificate by the democratic government. We're expecting um, more than um, 50,000, 60,000 people uh, who will be descending to the Moses Mabide Stadium. We have planned as well that we are going to have an overflow uh, in the People's Park because the stadium can only take um, about 48 people into um, pack capacity. And the 10 styles are going to be counting people as they come in. And once we've reached the capacity of 48,000, the 10 styles will not be turning to, to, to indicate that the, the stadium is full now to capacity. So we are asking people to come early because it is on a first come, first serve basis. We are going to be really having a festivity of the day um, with uh, meat and, and, and the festivities of music, dance and jubilation um, uh, coming together really of the tapestry of uh, Guazulu Natal, you know, um, uh, nations, mm. uh, but also the African continent as it also joins us in this um, you know, historic um, a weekend. Yeah, and dignitaries from all over the world and all over South, uh, Africa are coming through. I suppose I have to ask you this question, particularly in the light uh, of the security concerns raised by the U.S. Embassy. Uh, our government is saying they're still looking into it, but they're fairly uh, calm about this issue. But um, 
security is a big issue, whether it be from crime, uh, from co controlling stadium crowds, which you've already explained quite well, there's a system in place. But how satisfied are you that in terms of any potential security threat this weekend, whether it be crime, uh, you know, your average typical crime, or any sort of terrorist threat, that this is going to be a safe area? Yes, the Minister of Police, um, but together with the Interministerial Committee, uh, have assured us that the police are working around the clock to ensure that, um, you know, um, any threat um, to any security threat um, really is, is dealt with. But also, um, from the community perspective, we have a number of uh, community structures that have also joined the community safety um, that is going to ensure the safety of the communities, but also of all the participants um, on this um, event on Saturday. The Minister of Police will be giving an up a security update specifically related to how secured is the event, but also all other plans that have put, they have put in place. And Premier, I would imagine in, in, in a way, you're saying sort of 50 to 60,000 people heading towards the stadium on Saturday, perhaps a bit of a dress rehearsal for the coming tourism season. How ready is the province for a massive sustained influx of tourists come December? Well, we are very much ready as the province to welcome back our visitors to the shores of KwaZulu-Natal. And this marks really the beginning of those festivities um, that we are going to be showcasing KwaZulu-Natal um, with its germs of a mass sea you know, products, the tourism products that we have. But we also have a variety of music, um, you know, festivities that are going to be taking place and, and for young and old, um, you know, not only in the beach, inland as well, in our Drakensberg Mountains, um, you know, in the north coast, um, in our Ismangaliso Wetlands Park, which is our, um, you know, World Heritage Sites. So we are very much ready. Uh, our security plans have been put in place as well. The transport um, influx as well has been, you know, planned for. And you were correct to say it is estimated that the aviation industry as well is going to be, you know, um, experiencing um, quite a larger volume and the demand of volume of people who want to travel in KwaZulu Natal. We've already seen this um, with the bookings um, that have been done in various tourism establishments and hotels to indicate that indeed there is a massive influx of people coming back. Of course, after COVID-19, everybody wants to come and enjoy, you know, our, our coastal you know, um, a city and the province, and we are very much ready to welcome um, those visitors with our warm hearts and a South African, you know, welcome. Oh, we look forward to, to seeing that, Premier. Thank you so much for your time. And as the Mayor of Etiquini told us uh, yesterday, lots of work being done to make sure the rivers and the oceans are clean, uh, the pump stations up and running, and water back in Tonga. That was the Premier of KwaZulu Natal, Namusa Duben Nube, talking to us about preparations for this weekend, the coronation or the handing over ceremony after the coronation, which happened in August of the Amazulu King.